Hi, my name is Alessandro and welcome to my channel. So today's video, I just wanted to sit down and talk about some makeup ticks and tricks that have changed my makeup routine and you know that I discovered myself. I was going to do this in like a tutorial form but I just want to focus on the tips. That's it. So let's get into it. So let's talk about eyeshadow first. This is probably my only tip for eyeshadow but whenever something isn't blending out right or I apply too much of a color or I just need a more smooth transition, I'll go in with translucent powder. So yeah, I'll go into the powder and then I'll just buff it into the eyeshadow and it just smoothens it out. Another tip for eyeshadow, I see a lot of people packing on their eyeshadow. I personally don't like to do that. It doesn't always work with every color. With some it does, but with some colors, it just won't. Some of them, when you apply them, if they're like pigments, it will just stick to where you apply. So it's happened to me where I'll just press into my eye a like dark blue eyeshadow. And then I'll go in and try to like buff it out and it just won't budge. Some colors just don't work like that. So it's better to not risk it and just build up your eyeshadow. That's how you'll get the most flawless application. Now let's move on to priming your skin. So after I prime my skin, I like to go in with my MAC Matte Fix Plus. And the reason why I like to go in with this is because I have combination skin and I like to go in with a lot of cream products. So I need to really prep my skin so my makeup can last. So this MAC Fix Plus has powder in it. So you need to shake it up before you use it so it's perfectly mixed. What this does, I'm basically setting my primer and creating a barrier for my skin so the makeup can last longer. I do this every single time with whatever foundation and it doesn't change the finish at all. It just makes your makeup last longer and it helps with oil prevention. I personally don't like to set my primer with actual powder. I like going in with this because this is basically like almost a liquid powder because I do find that when I set my primer with actual powder, it does change the texture of my foundation. Next to makeup tip, I've talked about this already on my channel multiple times, but I like to prime my under eyes too. This is the Becca Under Eye Fatigue Under Eye Primer. The reason why I like to prime my under eyes is because my under eyes are the most problematic for me. It's the hardest thing to do for me. I don't even have fine lines, but when I apply concealer for some reason I'll have fine lines and crease. So this really helps with blurring out a bit your under eye concealer to apply smoother, to blend out easier, and to crease less. I find that when I use this, I use little to no powder. Next makeup tip is a color correcting tip. What I like to use for color correcting is this NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I color correct my beard area and my under eyes. So what I do with this is I'll apply a generous amount all over my beard. So I'll basically have almost like a mask and under my eye, just like right here and right here in the corner of my eyes. And I have a little vein right here. So that's where I apply it. I'll let it sit for two minutes before blending it. And after letting it just dry down, I'll very lightly just pat over it to make sure there's an even amount everywhere. You have to let it dry. You can't just pat it out immediately because you need to let it set. This NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, the name is deceiving because it does not dry dewy or radiant. It dries down a soft matte. So this is perfect for color correcting. I go in the color um, Chestnut. It is 
medium dark 2.5. This is darker than my whole skin tone, a shade or two darker, and it's also a little bit orange on me. So it's the perfect color corrector for my beard area and under eyes. When I apply it under my eyes, I do the same thing. I let it dry and then I'll lightly pat it over. Now, let's move on to foundation. When I apply my foundation, I'll apply the foundation on my hand, go into with a brush, and lightly pat it over my skin. The reason why I pat it, I only pat it into my skin, is because I don't want to go in and move that color corrector. I need the NARS Radiant Concealer to stay in its place, to keep my beard area covered. So I don't wanna be buffing it in because it will move the concealer and it will defeat the whole purpose of color correcting and it will just mix into your foundation and it will just turn into this thick texture. You want to just lay the foundation over the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. So I just pat it into my skin, pat it all over my skin and then in the end, I'll spray a face mist and then again, just lightly pat it over my skin. If you do that, you will look flat. You will be full coverage with most foundations because you didn't move that color corrector and you just applied the foundation over it. I'm able to get the Giorgio Armani Luminous Soap Foundation, which is like a light to medium coverage to a full coverage beat. I'm gonna insert a picture of my makeup I did this weekend where I was wearing the Giorgio Armani Luminous Foundation and it was full coverage. That's what you get when you just pat in your foundation. Next makeup tip is strobing. Now, what is strobing? Strobing is just highlighting certain areas of your face like your cheekbones, your nose, the top of your lips, your forehead. Some people strobe under the foundation, but I do pretty full coverage beats, so I feel like strobing under my foundation just covers it. Unless you go in with something with a very thick highlighter under it, I find that most foundations just cover it. I will sometimes, just for shits and giggles, put my MAC Strobe Cream under my foundation, but what makes the biggest difference is after you apply your foundation to apply on your highlight areas this MAC strobe cream and it just melts into your foundation and gives you a beautiful glow. I personally use two products to do that. After I apply my foundation I will use this YSL Touche Cloth. It's a brightening pen. I'll pump it out, put a good amount of product on my hand, then I'll get this MAC strobe cream mix them together, and then I'll get a brush and pat it into my highlight areas. And it gives you the most beautiful glow from within without changing the texture of your foundation. Now, this tip and trick changed my life. This is how I apply my concealer. So, I'll go in first and, you know, I'll put the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer under my eye, right here, right here, and here. Let it sit for two minutes, lightly pat over it. And then, I'll get my concealer, apply it on my hand, and let it sit for a minute. I let it sit so it could build a little bit of coverage. After I let it sit for a minute, I'll go in with a tiny beauty sponge. The reason I use a tiny beauty sponge is so I can really get it in every single crevice of my eye and apply it with precision. So I'll go in with my beauty sponge after a minute or two, and then I'll apply it exactly where I want it. Exactly, and again, lightly pat it. Lightly pat it, lightly pat it, lightly pat it, lightly pat it right here, clean up my eyeshadow, lightly blend it out to the rest of my makeup, 
And what this does, you go in with the perfect amount of product. You don't have an excess amount of concealer because you went in and built up to the amount of coverage that you want. And you also end up using less because first of all, by letting it dry down, the coverage increases a bit. And then by patting it and just stamping it into your skin, the product is just more prominent. Applying makeup is like painting your face. And when you paint something, you don't pour the paint onto the canvas and then blend it out. You grab your brush, you dip it into the paint, and then paint your canvas. We should be doing the same thing when applying your makeup. We shouldn't be going in with our concealer wand, applying a bunch of concealer, and then trying to figure out how to blend it out perfectly and how to get the most flawless airbrush application when you applied way too much to begin with. And you can't fix that. Another tip before we move into powders. Baking. I don't like to bake. I avoid powders as much as possible, even with having combination oily skin. I don't like powders. I feel like they change the finish of the cream products. And on me personally, it emphasizes my pores, fine lines, and textures. But sometimes I want to go in and clean up my cream bronzer and my cream contour. But I don't like powder. So what I do, I like to use my YSL Touche Cloth to clean up our bronzer and contour. My favorite way of doing it is applying the YSL Touche Cloth on my hand going in with a small beauty sponge and just patting it in where I need to clean it up. Because again, I go in with just the right amount of product that I need. So now let's get into setting our eyes. You know, as much as I hate powder, sometimes I do need to set where I crease, which is right under my eye right here and a little bit right here. But to set your concealer, you don't need that much powder. You don't. When you go in with a lot of powder, you're actually gonna get the opposite results you want. Your concealer's not gonna set in place. You're gonna have a lot of product just sitting on your face, getting ready to just crepe up and sit in your fine lines and crease more. So you want to avoid using as much powder as possible. So what I like to do, I like to go in with a small brush to just apply very little powder to the areas where I need to set. This is the, um, it's a brush from MAC. It is their 217S brush. It's a tapered fluffy brush and I'll dip into my powder, tap up the excess, and then I'll lightly just press it where I wanna set. Pressing, Product is how you should apply mostly all your products because you won't move anything around. When you press it, you're not gonna move the concealer. Like if you were going like this, you're gonna be moving the concealer. Let's say you still crease. Cause you know what happens? It happens. Don't go in with more powder. Don't go in with more product. You, you don't wanna do that because there's already an excess amount of product under your eye. That's why it's creasing. What I find best of removing creased concealer is not going in with my finger and patting it out. I feel that when I do that, I move more concealer around. I move around more product and it sometimes messes up my concealer. Now this might be extra to just carry around in your purse, but it's a small brush. But this um, angled, fluffy, tapered brush, what I like to do where I'm creasing, I'll just lightly blend out in the same direction of my crease. You don't want to go opposite because what this does, this light fluffy brush targets the fine line and blends out the product. This works all the time and makes my concealer look as fresh as it did. Let's talk about setting your full face and the type of brushes you should use because the type of brushes you use really does make a difference on how the product applies. I like to lightly set my T-zone because I do get oily on my forehead and 
right here on the sides of my nose. What I like to do, I like to go in with this fluffy brush that I don't know if you can tell on camera, it's kind of compact on the bottom, but then the bristles thin out. What this does is that when you dip into your powder, the powder falls to the bottom and it releases a smaller amount of powder when you go in to set your face. And it creates a beautiful, just soft airbrushed finish. The difference with going in with a brush like this that is thinner on the top bristles than going into with a brush like this is that this is a very just thick brush and all the powder that you dip into sits just on the top of the brush. It doesn't go inside the brush like this one does and then lightly dispenses it. This just sits on the top of your brush and then when you go in you're just applying a thick amount of powder initially and having to go in with more and more. While this just lightly as you're brushing it over your skin is dispensing the product. This really changed how I set my face. This brush is from It Cosmetics. It is their flawless powder brush in 202. They also come with a smaller one. Um, I personally like to use, I have two of them. I like to use one for um, blush to just get a precise airbrushed application and then one for highlight. This brush for highlight is bomb. When you go in with like a fan brush, I used to go in with this brush. See how it's just a tight fluffy brush? I used to notice that I felt like when I applied it, my highlight just kind of sat where I first went into it and then I really had to go in and blend it out and then I was sometimes even moving around makeup that I had under. But when you go in with this brush that it's thinner on the top, it really applies the highlighter flawlessly. And you don't have to struggle to blend it in because it just applies it blended in from the beginning. Okay, we're almost on our, our one of our last steps. So now with setting our face. So I like to go in on my whole face with a more long lasting setting spray or like a mattifying setting spray because I do go in with a lot of cream products. So I'll usually go in with either the um, Urban Decay All Nighter or the Urban Decay D Slick or the MAC Fix Plus Matte again, but this is what changes the game. This is what changes it all. I like to go in, you could go in with any. My favorite was the Marc Jacobs Coconut Setting Mist, but this is almost out. I should finish it, but this is almost out and I think it's getting discontinued, but this was bomb. Now I'm going in with the Dewy Finish Setting Spray from Cover FX, but yeah, I like to apply a dewy setting mist on my highlight area. I like to do it twice because I'm extra. I like to do it before I apply highlight. I'll apply on my beauty sponge. Try to go in with a clean one. I personally use two beauty sponges when I'm applying my makeup. I use like one to like really blend out those cream products and like just one towards the end to clean up my makeup and to like just for finishing touches so I'm not going in with a hella dirty sponge that has like a bunch of foundation cream bronzer cream contour cream blush you know because why do that when you're almost done with your makeup that's another tip use two sponges or three like I do so you know you're not messing it up use one for like powder if you do use powder this is what this one was initially for but now I just use it to touch up so yeah use two sponges but either way um, I'll apply the dewy setting spray, apply it on my highlight area, and then I'll apply my highlight, set my whole face, and then at the end, I'll apply the dewy spray again to just really melt that highlight in, and so my cheekbones could just pop more. When you apply something dewy on your cheekbones, it emphasizes them. When you apply something dewy, it emphasizes it, period. Because it's some glossy texture, and when the light hits it, it, it emphasizes it. So when you apply this 
dewy setting spray on your cheekbones. It will emphasize it without changing the finish of the rest of your whole face. Because if you were like me, you don't want to go in with a dewy spray like this if you have combination skin because that will, oof, you'll look like an oily mess and it'll ruin your makeup. Another tip, I forgot to mention this. I like to do cream bronzer and cream blush and cream contour. For my cream bronzer, it's the Huda Beauty Cream Tantour, so I have to dip my brush in. I dip my brush in, I remove the excess product on my hand, and then I'll go in. And for the cream blush, it's a stick. So I'll apply the stick on my hand, go into the brush, and then onto my face. For the cream contour, it's also a stick, so I'll do the same thing that I did with the cream blush. Like I said, we're painting our faces. You don't apply paint on the canvas and then blend it out. You want to dip your brushes into the paint and then apply it on your canvas. I forgot one tip that is actually really important and I couldn't leave out this video. If your concealer or if just something is getting crepey, is looking caked, after you apply powder or even before you apply powder, get your MAC strobe cream, put it on your hand, go in with your beauty sponge and just tap over wherever you're getting cakey. What that does, the MAC strobe cream will just melt into the makeup and make it just look more skin-like. Let's say if I went with a little too much powder under my eyes and my skin is looking a little crepey, I'll go in with my MAC strobe cream, press it over it, it'll melt the powder into the concealer and it will give you a beautiful skin-like glossy finish. So yeah, that is pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found some of these tips useful. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.